Bobcats of NYU. Let's meet tonight's starting lineups. First, for the Bobcats. At forward, number seven, Owen Smith. At midfield, number 10, Robert Shello. Playing defense, number 12, Mateo Schlitz. At forward, number 14, Maxi Rodriguez. In defense, number 15, Pablo Vargas. In the midfield, number 17, Mateo Russo. Playing midfield, number 18, Daniel Sarmiento. At forward, number 22, Sergio Montan. Eight, Louis Meeks. In defense, number 32, Isaiah Boyd. And the goalkeeper for the Bobcats is number one, Grant Engel. NYU is coached by Joseph Fusion, Paul Lasore, Greg Kenny, and head coach Kim Wyant. Yeah, it's back to shots back. Shot, it's like shot scope or something like Walking that. Out with the props today is the R Ryan Campbell, forward, Wyckoff, New Jersey. Kyle Dennis, goalkeeper, South Plainfield, New Jersey. Shane Doherty, forward, Delran. Vincent Guzzo, midfielder, Washington Township. Kevin Pereira, midfielder, Allentown, New Jersey. Will Shawstead, defense, Allentown, New Jersey. Zach Swarbrick, defense, Lewis Delaware. Noah Baker, goalkeeper, Malvern, New Jersey. Colin Cardona, defense, Elmer, New Jersey. Texas Hazovic, defender, Bud Lake, New Jersey. Ryan Logar, defense, Washington Township. Kevin Premich, midfielder, Allentown, New Jersey. Nick Schweigeter, midfield, Jackson, New Jersey. Mo Duke Sal, defense, Harrison, New Jersey. Derek Carpio, High Sound, New Jersey, forward. Matt Fahey, defender, Williamstown, New Jersey. Mike Schoner, forward, Jackson, New Jersey. Shadrach Asadi, forward, Atlanta City, New Jersey. Dion Duclo, center mid, Sickleville, New Jersey. My name is Saifa Saidi, I play midfield and I'm from Freehold, New Jersey. Joseph McGarrow, goalkeeper, Garfield, New Jersey. Jackson Nokioma, defender, Houston, Texas. Aaron Robertson, midfielder, Neptune. John Strollon, midfield, Del Rant. LSFM Channel 2. It's Joe Stoppenberg here alongside Elijah Brown. We got men's soccer headed your way in just a few moments as the women's soccer team was taken down by a Bridgewater College as a score of 1 to nothing. They start the team 0 and 1. The Profs last night, though, did start their season 1 and 0, and they did it in a, a th fashion of a three to nothing, two goals from Primich and a goal coming from Pereira. It's a night of the Kevins as they are getting ready to uh, hop onto the field. Kyle Dennis will be in for another start for the Profs, followed by Modu So, Will Shawstad, Kevin Pereira, Vinny Guzzo, Derek Carpio, Kevin Primich, Mike Schoner, Matt Fahey, Aaron Robertson, Ryan Logar, and Nick Schlageter. And speaking of Nick Schlageter, and, and we have to talk about a little bit about him and Modu So. They were the guys that were going absolutely all over the place last night. They were all in the backfield, in you know, playing defense, but then they were also going and trying to score goals on the other side. Elijah, talk to me and tell me how that uh, would it basically improves your team instantly, even though you're not gaining any more talent or, or anything tell me how um how it's it's better for your team to to have that the flexibility well the fact that uh those two players were showing such a hard work ethic 
uh, it really it really spreads throughout the rest of the team. You know, you see uh, your teammates uh, uh, enthusing, being enthusiastic about the way they're playing and showing that, dis displaying all the energy. It really just spreads throughout the team and it makes you want to work just as hard as them. And when the entire team is displaying uh, the energy and the, the hard work, it's going to really spread and a three to nothing uh, win is going to happen more often than not. So uh, keeping the energy high um, really, really um, affects the teammates in a positive way. Yeah, and we saw a lot of positive things coming from last night's 3 to nothing victory. Um, we saw a great game coming from Kyle Dennis, although he didn't make uh, a lot of shots. He only saved three. Uh, but the more important thing is he didn't give up a goal. Uh, and now moving forward after Eric Checker has moved on from the program, we have Kyle Dennis in there to uh, be in goal. And that is the... Whistle, the first kickoff of the game. It begins here with Pereira. He brought it back out to Shostad on the far side of the field. He's got Fahey all the way to his left in the defensive side. Midfield now sending it all the way in. A quick and early chance. Pereira has it. He's going to kick it out. Oh, a chance for the props there and over the net. It's a tremendous setup, a shot or a chance from Shostad to Pereira, which set up a chance for the profs and unable to capitalize. I think that ball's still going, Joe. That was that was very high over the net. As now the New York University Bobcats take over. Engel is the one that just kicked the goal kick back onto the field. Profs trying to swarm him. Smith, Shello, Schlitz, Rodriguez, Vargas, Russo, Sarmiento, Montan, and Meeks. Also Boyd as well for the Bobcats of NYU. Schlagater. Almost had Carpio there trying to split two defenders. He also brought Primich with him, but they're able to take it away. Profs coming in. Already 1-0 on the season. Scott Baker's loving the, the way that his team has been playing or, or did play in last night's game, the 3-0 victory. How can you not? It's Fahey passes to Schlagner. And... Yep. and I'm sorry, Joe. And some of the same principles from last year still apply. Uh, last year, we always talked about the swimming defense that the props played, and it's really carried over to this year. And that's why the props had such a great season, because of the swimming defense, not allowing the offense to really get into such a rhythm. And we're seeing much of the same things this year. You saw Rodriguez swarming there for the Bobcats as kind of pressured the props there. A throw in now awarded to the Bobcats. Bobcats, part of the Gilmore Alumni Classic. Universal Athletic Association, UAA. They come out of their conference. Last season, they were 9-8-3 overall, but they were 0-6-1 in conference play. Is now in the backfield. And the Bobcats look to start something, but it was taken away by the profs. Shostad. Profs had, so far, have the majority of the possession as so at midfield. He's going to take his time. Admiring the, the size of so and how quickly he can move. The athleticism, what he brings to the team, Fahey. Sends it over to Pereira. Primich sends it right back. Crosses in. Oh, and a great block there coming from a Bobcat. In the penalty box, it was filled. And a foul will be called. I believe it's going to be on the profs. Yeah, so it's going to be a goal kick for the Bobcats. You're already seeing a lot of a great defense coming from these Bobcats. And, and when, once one of these profs get it in, right into the net or right into where the goal is. A swarm. 
And, and let's keep an eye on, on this game in terms of how tired some of these props may be because they did indeed play a game last night, and um, it's a hard for a game. Two 45-minute halves is nothing to sneeze at, so uh, those legs still might be a little bit tired. Uh, cramps might come into play, so let's just keep an eye on how, how last night's wear and tear of the game really uh, plays a part in this game. And why you also played yesterday in part of the mm -hmm. Gilmore Alumni Classic plan, a great team in Rutgers Camden. A tough team in the NJAC to play. The Profs will see them later on in this season. I believe August, or not August, uh, October 17th of this year. They're actually going to get them at home. Pereira was expecting a pass. It was behind them, and it goes out of bounds. Isaiah Boyd passed it over now to midfield. And... That was Mateo Schlitz passing to the far side. Bobcats kind of taking their time in the defensive zone. The props, all they want to do is run and gun. They have to like, it's a whole different ball game of what you're seeing from the props from last night into, to, into this night. As the ball is going to roll out of bounds, it's off a foot of a Bobcat. Last night it was the uh, approach of Let's just wait in the, the defensive zone. Let's wait for something to happen. And when they did, they striked three times. Ball in the penalty box and now brought out. It was Robertson who brought it out. He's going to be chasing it after it was hit off a Bobcat in front. I believe that was Boyd. Brought over to Shawstad on the far side. He's getting ready. He's loading up. Blocked. Great, great block there. Now So is going to fake the shot. Pass off a quick pass back to So, but it was behind him. Another pass behind him as So still tracked down the ball. Backwards pass to Pereira. Get around the defender, but blocked and out of bounds. It's going to be a corner kick, though, for the profs. I must say the footwork of these soccer players is, a, is an amazing thing to see. You know what else would be amazing to see? Probably them uh, cut a rug at the limb work sometime because <laughs> their footwork is on another level, I must say. Corner kick in. Almost headed in. Is actually headed the other way. The props still have possession. Shawstad. Dancing around a couple defenders trying to dance. Throw them. I'm unable to get that. Moduso tracking down the ball is well... As Shawstad Schlagader dropped back just in case along with Fahey. Shawstad's going to get the foul on him. No Ryan Campbell. No Shane Doherty. Doherty the leader for the Profs last season in goals. As well as points and shots. One of the top of the end, Jack, is Kyle Dennis is going to face a shot and a wrong way shot there. Keep it up, boys. Keep it up. By Owen Smith. He was right at the net. Connected with it, but it went out of bounds instead of going towards the net. 37 and a half minutes left to go here in the first half. Still nothing, nothing. Kyle Dennis ready to send it away. Goes to Schlagner right off his head to so. Sow. It was on Smith's foot and hit Carpio in the chest. Blocked off a of Carpio and it's going the other way, but I got a foul on him. Boyd on the near side. Pass to Schlitz. To the far side midfield stopped. And back to Shawstad. Shawstad, a captain on this team. Along with Shane Doherty. Modu So now, back to Fahey. Robertson to So. Still in the defensive zone. But he's beating a couple of defenders. He's got three surrounding him right now, so he passes back to Fahey. 
So def take. definitely a good time to reset. You know, they had the run and gun approach early in the game, but now they're they're passing the ball around, distributing it, and hopefully finding trying to find an opening in this defense. That wasn't moving there. They tried to thread it through two Bobcats, and not there. So close to a breakaway, but pushed away by his head. That's Fehi. And now the props are on the other end. The props in front of them as they send it out of bounds. Will be Bobcat ball. Nothing, nothing here in the campus on the campus of Rowan University. And once again, out of bounds. And this is the part of the game where it's more, more so a filling out process. Uh, ten minutes into Still, the game, yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah, ten minutes into the game, you want to kind of get a feel for what your opponent is doing and where they're going to go uh, throughout this game. So, um, still a lot of soccer left to play. Um, you got to understand that you're not going to be able to score three goals at all the time. So, um, we'll see what this night brings. As it looked like Carpio was bringing down a Bobcat. And a call foul on him, a free kick. I was on Schlitz. Brought him down. They're going to put it right back in play, though. A kick from Engel. Boyd up now. Headed to Sarmiento. And a Bobcat is down. Nothing intentional there. Might be a right leg or right ankle from Sarmiento. Daniel Sarmiento, the sophomore from Miami, Florida. And it looks just like a stinger. You know, you, you kind of uh, bump body parts with the opponent and at first it, it feels like the most pain you've ever been in your life but as a few seconds go it goes away. Free kick blocked away by the head of Mo So He's still going to stay with it and So is all over the place tonight as they're going to call a foul. Bumped into a player and he went down. He wasn't happy about it. Prof's trying to set up a wall here to block this free kick. They're trying to say that they need to be back a little bit further. Shawstad's in there, so Schlagner, Primich, and Pereira. To the right of them. Logar and Robertson off the top, off the crossbar, and oh, a big save by Dennis. A diving save after it popped out the crossbar. They had a rebound shot and a huge save coming from Kyle Dennis. Man, someone owes that man at least two cookies for that because that was an amazing save. One cookie per save because that was amazing. Huge save coming from Kyle Dennis. 32-20 left to go in the first half. Cat-like reflexes. It would have took me at least a minute to get up after the first after the first save. And that was shot right off the crossbar quick, too. Absolutely. Bobcats trying to get it out of their own zone. Schlager went for it. Got knocked down. Profs take over. Shawstad's going to take it back more. He's got Fahey with him. As they're going to look to get it to Robin Robertson. Fahey bringing it up. Pereira dances through a defender and gives it to Schlagner. Schlagner's going to send it in. A save. An easy save to a falling down Engel. Senior from New York, New York. 
And that seemed to me to be kind of a warning shot, you know, as if we're going to be here all night, so get ready. You're basically saying, hey, we're not we're gonna, not just going to sit back. We can shoot, too. Absolutely. Wasn't as hard as a shot. as difficult to – the save is made for Kyle Dennis. As ball goes out of bounds, it's going to be Bobcat ball. Throw in on the far side. Schlageter's there to stop it. And he's going to pass back to Fahey. Down the field pass, Schlageter once again. Down the far side. Hermich fighting for the ball. Out to Carpio now. Primich to Logar. Now back to Shawstad. In and caught by Engel. Great job of the NYU goalie coming out and catching that one. That could have been a dangerous play there. Boyd now on the near side. To Schlitz. So it's Sarmiento. Over and it might have been a trip there as Kyle Dennis is going to come out and scoop that one up. Props are going to reset. Like that, my Maxi Rodriguez was looking for a call there, but a Bobcat still down on the ground. He got something in his shoe there. Or at least he has a shoe off. Can't see who that is, but so they're going to look around. So has it. Schlagner looking around. He saw the. The defender coming back, maybe he tried the sneak play. So's gonna laser one over the top of the net and out of bounds. Poor ball. I heard that thud from up here. That ball is gonna feel that in the morning. Yeah, so has got that big boot mm -hmm. that he can put it down the field in a hurry. Angle's gonna grab it. Still no substitutions made yet for both the profs and the Bobcats. Still no score. 29 and a half minutes left to go here in the first half. Boyd to So. Brought his knee up and hit his knee. Quick throw in by the Bobcats and they have possession. Run in and kick to Rodriguez. As a takedown now. And we have a Bobcat down. That looked a wee Referee's bit He's going to tell Schlageter to come here. Can't quite see who it is, but it looked like the Bobcat player was trying to go for a header as the Prost player was going for the ball as well. And the Bobcat player's head just made contact and he seems, he's up, he's, he's fine, he's fine. That is Robert Shello. Number 10 who was down for the Bobcats. Boyd has it. Schlageter and Primich were going right in for it. Now Carpio tries to block with his head, can't, but it is blocked by Fahey. Prof's trying to get possession back as he runs. <laughs> Ran into uh. Carpio. Yes. They take over once again. Owen Smith had it to Boyd. Back to Smith. Bring it back. Two Schlitz. Over to Monton. Rodriguez trying to make some moves, trying to get it away from So. 
Back to Montana. Great move. Going to send it in. Catch by Dennis. Twenty-six forty-two left to go in the first half. Score still nothing, nothing. Joe Stoppard here alongside Elijah Brown. Part of the WGLS Channel 2 right here on RoanRadio.com. Blue Rock still on Channel 1. Shawstad now to Kyle Dennis. Dennis is going to be taking it out just a little bit, and he's going to kick it right over to Fahey. Put it in just a little bit too much as Boyd had it. Pereira was there to pressure him, and so was Carpio. Carpio, a tiny little shove on Smith. Nothing intent there. They were both going to get the ball. Just ran into each other. And the refs are calling a really tight game. There's been quite a few whistles so far in this game, and you know they're sticking to their guns. You know they're not being lo too loose. They're playing it tight, and you got to respect that. So your own ball now. Shawstad taking it up slowly. Right before midfield, going to stop and kick it back to Fahey. Back to Shawstad. He's going to find some space. What's two defenders? He had Logar right next to him as looks like Carpio goes down. That's going to be a free kick for him. Shawstad's going to take the kick here. Looks like So's right next to him, too. So setting up. Angle was directing traffic behind everybody. The kick from Shawstad was blocked by the wall. And a corner kick for the props coming up. And it looks like there's going to be a substitution made relatively soon. I can see a props player getting loose and warmed up on the sideline. So uh, let's pay attention to that because the starters have been out in this field for quite some time. And taking this corner kick will be Pereira. Setting up here. They're throwing everybody near the net now as whistles blow. Might have to do it again. He's might have got a little bit too chippy. As yes, they will redo it. Pereira, big sigh of relief after it was kind of a uh, a little bit of an overshot. He's got a chance to redo it now. Kick on the way from Pereira. Popped up in the air, shot by Carpio, and it will go out of bounds. Tough play there from Carpio. Got enough leg on it. It just wasn't towards the net. And it was a difficult kick by him. He had to really twist his hips, get his hips over, and it just, I don't think he was able to really eye the net and really eye where he wanted the ball to go. So it just unfortunately went out of bounds. Boyd. You have Carpio and Pereira coming in. Kick to the far side. And Rodriguez taking it through a couple of props defenders, making defenders miss. Prof knocked into a great play there by the Bobcats. And Smith quick throw in. On the far side, cross in. Almost headed away. They have it, still have a chance in the box. And it was headed away. Smith brought it up. Got a piece of it on his head, and the props are going to clear it out of the offensive zone. Taking the pressure away. As on the other side now, Smith once again having it. 
Profs take it away quickly. Schlagader looking for So. He connects. Back to Schlagader and Robertson now. Pass to Pereira. Back to Fahey. Cross field to Shawstad. Send it in and it'll hit a Bobcat defender. So is going to head it up. And he sent right back to him, though. Robertson loading up. He's going to stop and try to defeat, beat a defender. He did as he passed it to So. So is getting pushed a little bit by Smith. That's nothing to compare to him. Beautiful kick. Cross field. It was touched by Logar, and it was hit out by a Bobcat. It was a great play by Vinny Guzzo. The game for the profs, number 12, Mike Schoner. Schoner comes in. Replacing number 23, Nick Schlageter. Schoner comes in for Schlageter with 21 minutes left to go here in the first half. Score still nothing, nothing. We're almost kind of seeing this, almost the same game as we saw last night, except there was a kick right there. It's going to be a foul on the profs. A little bit too much contact there. The profs made as they're going the other way. Rodriguez, quick pass. I'm going to write the shallow. Profs intercept and reset. What I like to see about this is that everyone gets a chance to touch the ball. You know, there's not one player that just needs the ball. Um, everyone gets to touch, and that's really where you find your openings at. Ball was saved from going out of bounds, and before, right behind the goal, before it was a corner kick here. Thrown here for the profs. It's over, so it's head to Schoner. Miscommunication. Carpio almost had the goal. Or almost had at least a shot. Eighteen thirty-five off the go. First half action. Boyd now near side. Dennis directing traffic. Fahey tried to step into a Bobcat right before hitting the ground Monton. He to the far side, great interception there. It went right to Carpio. Going down the sideline, Guzzo gets away from a couple defenders as now the Bobcats take over. Guzzo ran all the way down the field to just get it taken away from a Bobcat. All goes right back to Dennis as he's going to pass to Fahey. Fahey now, booming kick down, missed everybody. It'll go right to Engel. He's trying to find somebody, anybody in there. Could not. Yeah, that kick had a lot of hope behind it, but unfortunately, it went right into the Bobcats' possession. You just throw it down there to, to hopefully find somebody that can start momentum shift and swing. Bobcat went down. It looked like he was like he didn't get hit that much. Do you He's, think there was a little acting going on right there? Might be Academy Awards season coming up. <laughs> he did spin around does get up and is running away fine Smith Ooh. oh and he did a takedown there from Robertson yeah, that's a little that football action right there definitely deserves a uh, foul there yeah yeah well, I don't think any intent though was put as he was just trying to get him out of the way right 
maybe watched a few Philadelphia Eagles highlights before the game and got, got a little <laughs> riled up. You know, not to brag or anything, but I did take an acting class two semesters ago. Got an A okay. in it. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. You know, just not to toot my horn, but toot toot. You know, I had a... <laughs> They have a bright future in acting. Classes will resume on Tuesday. Yes. First day of classes. Ball went up and blocked all the way back to midfield. And getting closer to the defensive zone of the Bobcats. Schlitz passed all the way over. Vargas was right there. And didn't pass to him. The ball's going to sail right out of bounds. It's like Jackson Nokioma might be warming up over there on the prof sideline. Might see him in a little bit. We saw a lot of him coming off the bench. It's one of the reserves. Bobcats still have full control. A lot of weight on this defense. As they see an opening, Smith. There's nobody in front of him. Now there is. He got three defenders as he's slipping and sliding through the Prof's defensive zone. A shot, and it will be out of bounds. A Bobcat is down. And looks like it's going to be Monton, Sergio Monton down and the trainer is coming out I believe somebody just got a yellow well, Montan is down it might be a uh, a foot or leg injury as he was grabbing it. Knees working out his, his foot or ankle. Yeah, the trainer, like you said, is working out his ankle and he's twisting it around. I don't see Montone grimacing in pain, so that's that's a pretty good sign. Hopefully it's just a, some sort of strain Tweak, or something. Yeah. Yes, Modu So, yellow card. 29-13 into the game. And it's always a good sign to see a player walk off the field under his own power. Yeah, you definitely want to see that as just a little bit limping off the field. Might see a substitution come in here for him. But he's going to get looked at by the trainers. We might see him in the game for the props, in a, in later Jackson. on in the game. No Jackson Nokioma in the game. Man, that, that, is, that is quite the last name, I must say. Nokioma. That is. If you just look at it like the way that's spelled, it's. You it's might you, at first you look at it and it's like whoa, <laughs> but no, it's it's really you know, it's, you say yeah, it's it's fun to say. Nokioma, the freshman, six six, tallest on the team, right above Kyle Dennis, Joe Margera, Moduso, and Will Shawstad at six four. Hey, fun fact, Joe. Um, if you are six foot or taller, there is actually a club for tall people. Uh, all you got to do is be six foot or taller, and you can be in this illustrious club. I myself will not be able to participate I'll because I'm only 5'6". So uh, <laughs> we can start our own short people club if you would like. <laughs> that Fahey back to Kyle Dennis. Play resumes. 15-22 left here in the first half. The score is still nothing, nothing. Profs had a little bit more of an, an advantage or a time of possession over the Bobcats. Carpio tried to get it through as they're going to call a foul on the Bobcats. No card once again. 
Nothing malicious there. They set the ball up. Who's going to kick this one? Bobcats are going to set the ball up. Or set the wall up, excuse me. Pereira is going to be the one shooting. Pereira loads up. The kick around the wall oh. just over the crossbar. And that would have looked like Primich's goal last night. I don't know if you saw that, Elijah, but Primich had a beautiful second goal last night. He started looking at Kyle Dennis. He was right inside the 18-yard box. And he was looking at Kyle Dennis, and he just did a 180 kick. It spun, and you saw the spin on the ball. It went to the top right corner, and in. It was a beautiful second goal of the game. And he's going to be looking one for here. Jackson Nokioma had the breakaway there, but a Bobcat came in and ruined the fun. Ball was tipped by a, they're saying a Bobcat. The Bobcats don't believe it. They are adamant about this call. They do not like it. The Bobcats don't. It was a tough play in the corner there, and it was hard to see from our vantage point because we had all the players' backs to us. Nevertheless, though, it will be a corner kick. Pereira doing the kicking. Prof sent everybody in. The kick stopped. And Modu So, and I believe that's Carpio that went down. They get right back up, though. Modu So is basically on top of Carpio. They both went up for the a header, and Modu So landed on top of them. Matt Fahey's coming over. He might throw it in. And he will. Big throw from Carpio coming. Or excuse me, Fahey coming. And so tried to get it at a bad angle in. Wasn't even close. It was a bad angle. Nevertheless, it was a shot attempt from Modusso. Replacing number 17, Mateo Russo. Oliver Clayman coming in, the freshman from Denver, Colorado. Seeing his first action of the game, Boyd. Tried to get it to Smith there, but once again, Fahey block. They've been trying to get it to Smith all night on breakaways, and it's just been stopped by this prof's defense. It includes... Back and forth with Fahey and So. Comes Primich. A pass to the far side. But it was a little bit too far of a pass from Primich. That's going to roll, roll out of bounds. 11.25 left to go in the first half. And, and the pace is kind of starting to quicken up a bit. Um, Ten minutes left and a half. It's almost like the end of a uh, of a boxing round, you know. You the the boxers want to throw as many punches as possible to to win the judges over. So this is kind of what we're especially seeing especially right at the end of that round. Yeah, uh, absolutely. This is kind of what we're seeing now with the pace quickening, hoping uh, that one of these teams are hoping that they can score a goal uh, to go into the locker room with some momentum going. It was Robertson now back to Fahey. Well, shots out on the far side. Stop and pass over to Primich. He's going to roll and continue to go on that sideline. Primich is down. Still going to stay with the profs. It did go out of bounds. Profs. Actually, no, it be, there was a foul that was committed before the ball went out of bounds. I believe that is Pereira once again doing the kicking. Oh, it's actually going to be Shawstad. Header just missing the net. Angle falling down. And he might have hurt himself on there. 
might have caught a cramp or something. He, I think he might have like landed wrong. Angle is down and goal for NYU. Oh, he hopped right back up. Might have been just a, a cramp or something. He, he went right to the ground and just started yeah. grabbing it. Snaking his boot maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I, maybe he was just thinking, man, that almost went in and got so scared. <laughs> yeah, he just fell something. down like, whew. <laughs> I'm glad that he's okay, though. Even if there was anything, I don't know. I, I think he just was like, like, we're just taking a big sigh of relief that the, the ball didn't go in, but that could be, you know, could be anything. Yeah, yeah. No uh, trainers went out or anything. Up to interpretation, I would suppose. It was Huertas who came in, got his first touch of the game here on the New Year's side. Now it's on the far. Cross playing some tight defense is a great steal from Primich. And there goes Ryan Logar on the far side. He's going to bring it off. It's going to hit a defender and go out of bounds. Last touch by NYU. A corner kick for the props coming up. Props have a lot of chances here. So far, hasn't they haven't capitalized. Can we see it here? Pereira once again on the far corner will have the kick. Up, oh, it's not a great one. Just going to bounce out. Robertson back to Pereira. He's going to send it in. This time, not on a corner kick. Regular kick. Going to send it in once again. Blocked. Almost headed by Robertson. And Moduso is going to take control of it. As Smith was looking for a call. Faye, he's going to shoot back to Dennis. Robertson is... Immediately charged on by Boyd. He tried to get it to Pereira to get away from the pressure and unable to as it goes out of bounds. Oh, man. If something something was bubbling. Something was boiling on that one. And they were closing in very quickly. Yes. If, if Kevin Pereira was able to get control of that ball, man, he had a space and opportunity in front of him. It's pretty much turning on the Jets, making a defender miss. Oh, excuse me, that's going to be Schoner as Schoner gets tripped up. He might have got the, the smallest touch, but tough touch made him fall. Made him stay away from the ball. Free kick is awarded. Free kick for a profs. A yellow card on Pablo Vargas for that one. So now two yellows, one on So, Farrell, and one on Vargas for NYU. Crucial part here. Shawstad is awaiting the kick. They're going to set up the wall. Prof's trying to move Schoner around in the box. Nokioma's also moving around. The shot just missing right off the post. That came in hot. Hot and ready like a little Caesar's pizza. That, that was <laughs> that was on fire. That ball, if it would have went in the net, it would have probably went through the net. Absolutely. Wow. That was – I'm glad no one was able no, – that ball didn't uh, contact anyone because that would have been painful. 6.44 left to go in the first half. Boyd here on the near side. Carpio and Nokioma. Schoner is on the far side. It was a great play to read the play by Nokioma. Smith taking on Pereira. Pereira right on him. Carpio is going to come over and help out. Split the two defenders. That was Huertas. They're going to center it 
They're going to kick it out to Huertas from outside the box and blocked by So. Send it in. And it will go wide of the net. All goose eggs right here. 5.50 left to go in the first half. Might be a substitution, yes, for NYU. I think the unsung hero of that play was uh, was Aaron Robertson because he was able to kind of box out the Bobcast defender, not allowing him to get to the ball and just allowing that ball to go out of bounds, giving the props their possession back. Yeah, he was only giving them a little contact. Not much. No. Nah. And now this crowd is getting really into it. Getting some chance going here. Just approaching five minutes left to go here in the first half. Profs tied at zero with NYU. Just off work here alongside Elijah Brown for WGLS Channel 2 right here exclusively on RoanRadio.com. Ball taken away. Bringing it up. No Kioma, and he's taken down. It was a ball that was a great play then by NYU. Primich almost had to steal. They beat Shawstad. He catches up and kicks it away. That's going to. Almost roll out of bounds. He got a stoppage there. No Kiyoma to So. So back to Primich. They're really putting a lot of pressure on Primich. They saw they had that two goal performance. He really hasn't touched the ball tonight a bunch. Carpio tried to get it over the head of Huertas, and they're going the other way now. So tried to step in there, could not as they pass it away. A three on one as Fahey runs in. Unimpeded to the net. Uh. Runs into a Bobcat. That is going to be a foul on Rowan after running in. Running into NYU there. I don't think there was a card shown though. Oh, and now it is. They've shown a yellow card to Fahey. So that's so and Fahey. they got to be careful. Yellow card for both. I'm going to set up a two-man wall here. That's going to be a three-man wall. Shoner is going to join... Pereira and Fahey. Schoener knocks it away. And here comes Robertson. Pass to So, and it's intercepted. He read that like a book. They brought it up. It was a tremendous steal by Sullivan. Pick it up. Boyd's going to cross it into the box. Taken away by Primich. Oh, and he could... Both of them, Bob, Bobcat and a prof down. Now Primich is the only one down. Incidental contact trying to go for the ball with three minutes left to go here. It is at, it's at this point where like the only thing you really see is the ball and unfortunately sometimes the defender gets in the way and huge kick down field. Pereira has it in the corner. Tries to get around the defender and Pereira's down. So, Robertson passes back to Fahey. Fahey sends it in. All the way over and headed into the 18 yard box. That's gonna end the play for the profs. Engel's gonna take it out now. He's gonna leave net as 
Looks like Carpio is approaching him a little bit. You don't want to get too far, though. As Prenich was going to go for that one, realized he couldn't. And headed away. They were holding Primich to get away with that one. On the far side, it looks like Schoner. Ball's going to be hit out of bounds by NYU. A throw in by the profs. Fahey all the way from the defensive zone. He's going to come in and throw it in. He's got the heavy hand, strong hand, and he's going to throw it all the way in. Angle comes out and catches it. Man, every single time they try to get it in. As Angle throws it completely just out of bounds. Throws it right from the box to right out of bounds. I think he expected one of his teammates to be yeah. in that spot. And Robertson gets tripped up a little bit. But he passes back to Kyle Dennis cleanly. Shaw down on the far. To Fahey. One minute remaining in the first half. You heard one it. Minute. One minute left here in this first half. The score is still nothing, nothing. A goal would be huge here at the end of this first half as ball goes out of bounds. Whistle blew. Clock still runs. Setting up a free kick here with 32 seconds left here in the first half. Perfect opportunity as I'm gonna try to put the ball in the right spot. We're approaching 20 seconds left. Kick away from Shostad. It's a low one. Almost hitting the referee. The header, it was scooped up and made it even higher as they're going to call a foul on Carpio. Interesting. It was an end of the half foul as Carpio was basically jumped on top of. They called a foul on Rowan. So a unusual foul to end the half. At the end of the first half. As the score, nothing, nothing. Don't you worry, my child. Everything's going to be just fine. Little darling, you keep on walking. Because I ain't never going to leave your side. As kids fall in love with sports, our universities are working every day to keep college sports safe. So you can watch them play with a little less worry and a little more joy. Hello, I'm Dan Gilmore, Director of Athletics at Rowan University. The primary goal of our department is to develop you, the student athlete, in all aspects of life. Rowan Athletics is committed to your success on the field, in the classroom, and as citizens of high moral character and service. Our mission defines the commitment. We exist to purposely foster a selfless environment that cultivates community, embraces learning, and enhances excellence in sport and life. I am a prof. We are dedicated to the pursuit of excellence. And committed to helping others achieve their fullest potential. As scholars, athletes, leaders, and members of society. Our department and the members within. Are devoted to enhancing opportunities for success and competitive greatness. I am a proud. We are committed to developing a spirit of unity and belonging in the athletic department for those we serve. We encourage diversity and inclusion. And create identity by bringing together members of our campus, alumni, and local communities through athletics and service. I am a prof. We hold ourselves to the highest standards of integrity. Through actions of respect, honesty, and fair play. We strive to behave ethically towards others. And convey expectations of high moral character. We are committed to each other and respect the differences in others. Our individual successes strengthen the whole, and we support one another in our endeavors as we each share a common goal. I am a prof. Education is the forefront of our existence. We develop a culture where lifelong learning is a priority. 
We support each other and our student athletes in the quest for self-improvement and academic success. To uphold the mission, Rowan Athletics Department will use its core values as guidance in actions both on and off the field. It's not about where you were born. It's not about your gender. Or the color of your skin. Or whether you're rich, poor, or in the middle. No matter what you play, if you have the skill and drive to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. When you're in college, you kind of find out who you are. And throughout your four years, you develop yourself with all the different experiences, which leads into dedicating yourself to your community, to your family. So when you're a senior, you're coming out a well-rounded person. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests outside of the classroom and outside of the court or field. I've had the ability to get into different activities and organizations, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. Getting to be involved in a lot of different things, ranging from obviously being a student athlete to getting involved with my campus and my community, and not only being allowed to do that, but being encouraged to do that. The opportunity be to be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, to have the professors know me on a personal level, all of those things came together uh, very nicely in one package in Division Three. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. It really helps you develop thinking from other people's perspectives and looking at problems from outside the box. Division Three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. I've definitely learned how to really be myself. I found out, yes, I am actually a good leader, and yes, I can actually put myself forward because I am good enough. I can do it. Coming in to college, I just wanted to get good grades and to do well. But it also made me realize that I have a lot of different career goals and I've learned so much about myself that I was always like growing and changing. When I got to college, it forced me to step up and become more of a leader. And I think that was something I had the capability of doing and forever grateful that being at a Division III school gave me that opportunity. You have to dedicate your time in the classroom. You have to dedicate your time in the gym, on the field, on the court. Our coaches and all the entirety of the athletic department, they valued the student athlete going out to community and trying something new and getting involved in campus life. You can get involved in so many different things. Um, so the possibilities are truly limitless for what you can do with your college experience. You can kind of make it your own in the Division III setting. So I would encourage people who want to have flexibility to pursue different interests and passions to go D3. At Rowan University, we are committed to a healthy, safe, and supportive community. It's on us to create an environment where everyone feels and is safe. To create an environment in which sexual assault is unacceptable. Sexual violence is more than just a crime against individuals. It threatens our families. It threatens our communities. It's on us to do something about it. To hold our friends accountable for their actions. To stop being a bystander to the problem of sexual assault. When we see something wrong, we should not look the other way. One in four women, one in 16 men, will experience some form of sexual assault during their college career. It's on us to look out for one another. To recognize that sex isn't sex unless you have consent. To get a friend home safe. Less than 5% of rapes are reported to law enforcement. It's on us to support survivors of sexual violence. And to never blame them. To start the conversations that are difficult. To take reports of sexual assault seriously. It's on us to promote a culture of respect. To treat women with respect. To treat men with respect. It's on us, all of us, to stop sexual assault.
After a shocking ending to its season a year ago, the men's soccer team has a better appreciation of the game and is hoping to carry over the same mentality it had during the 2017 regular season. The 2018 version of the profs will be all around stronger on the pitch as they return a slew of starters on both the offensive and defensive fronts. Yeah, I think we've all learned uh, a lot of lessons from last year. Uh, and the big one is, is that uh, defense wins championships and scoring goals is great, um, but when you come up short in a few games, it could cost you the season. And uh, we need to be able to defend better. Uh, we need to be able to shut teams out. And if you look at the teams that are winning national titles, they're, they're keeping teams either shut out or a goal. This will be the strongest and most talented defensive court Coach Baker has seen in the last five years. Seniors Will Shawstead and Zach Schwarbrick will be the workhorses at the back position. Nick Schlageter, Ryan Logar, and Matt Fahey will also see major minutes as Roan would like to lower the .92 goals against average from last year. Senior Kyle Dennis will be the starter in that as he has been working tirelessly on his technique after losing his job late in the season a year ago. Noah Baker and incomer Joe McGarr will serve as backups in net for the Brown and Gold. Kyle came in as his freshman and sophomore year and uh, and and crushed it and was you know a big part of our success those couple years and uh, I think he's in a, uh, a way better state of mind. Uh, he's way more confident. I think he's going to be fighting for it more with what happened last year and um, you know we feel real confident what he's going to do for us. Shane Doherty and Ryan Campbell will be the two big boppers at the four position. Road Radio 89.7 WGLS FM. It's Channel 2 coverage of a Prof Sports. I'm Joe Stoffenberg. With me is live. We got men's second half action just underway right now as we look at some uh, halftime stats or first half stats. Three shots for NYU, and Rowan got off nine shots, but only one of them was a shot on goal. Something interesting that was only really one really that connected to or near the net. And let's see if, if the profs are able to get uh, a high, uh, the same amount of shots in or even a higher volume of shots in uh, as they did the first half. A higher amount of volume and more accurate as well because uh, nine shots taken and really one on goal is not the best ratio to have. Just started second half action here on the campus of Rowan University. Tie ball game at zero. Mike Schoner missing. Trying to get that ball on the near side from Meeks. Gonna switch sides. The profs now going from left to right. Falling down is, I believe that's Carpio on the far side. About a minute and a half elapsed in the second half. Free kick awarded for the Bobcats. First of the half. Taken actually kicked back, trying to set something up. 
Here comes Pereira now to the kick to the far side. It was actually to Fahey. As he tried to keep it in front of him, he actually gave it to a Bobcat. He actually helped him out. And taken down, a foul called on the profs. Early on in the half, getting calls. Another free kick for the Bobcats. It looks like the ref is trying to help him out, trying to, looks like he walked five or six paces to the left, trying to get the props in the right position. Pereira is helping out with the wall as it goes right over and it's stopped by Schlager. Engel comes out of the net, almost to the Profs logo as he sends it away. Logar stops at Schoenar, Schoner, excuse me, puts it near the Profs logo. Primich got tangled up as Kyle Dennis just misses a shot. It goes over the net. Pretty much got tangled up. He's pleading his case to the ref now. He got tangled up with Matrino. Actually, that might have been Huertas that he got tangled up with. As Kyle Dennis boots that one away. So gets it on the near side, or excuse me, the far side. Back to Dennis. Starting to get aggressive with the defense here as that one's booted out to midfield and received by the Bobcats. Prost unable to get that possession after a Kyle Dennis kick. Boots it away as Angle, the Prof's still have possession here. Taken away immediately. And so, tries to take it away. Prof's getting really aggressive here. And a foul will be called. Prayer gets talking to from the referee. Kicked in, blocked by Primich. Forty minutes left to go here in the second half. The score still nothing, nothing. Schlager in, tipped off of somebody. Primich goes head over heels. Oh yeah, they had to stop. Yeah, he, he I saw Primich's feet go right to the sky. Clock's still running. He hit the ground hard, too. He got up there. So that landing was not going to be a fun time for him. Uh, he might stay on the field, too. It's going to be very surprising if he stays on the field. That would be really surprising. He deserves like a fruit roll up or something because that that was a tough that was a tough landing he took. I'm glad to see that he's all right though because that yeah, looked nasty. Very scary indeed. It's cr it's kind of crazy to see how some injuries look really nasty and then you see the player just get up like nothing happened. Yeah. Premich dealt with injuries last year as this one was headed by So. And out of bounds. A goal kick coming for the Bobcats. So got a piece of it. A little bit too much. And it went out of bounds. Angle with the kick. Thirty-eight twenty left to go in the second half. Nothing, nothing. 
Here on the campus of Rowan University, Joe Stavberg here alongside Elijah Brown. Nothing, nothing to score. Rodriguez pass to Huertas as he did get a, I believe Shostak got a piece of the ball. But he had a little bit too much of Huertas on the slide tackle. Free kick for the Bobcats. Trying to set the play up here. Pereira tried to get in the way of that as I believe So got a head on it. Carpio knocked it back to midfield. Can't control it. Boyd on the far side. Profs and Bobcats players running into each other. It was incidental contact. Man, this is not a good game. This is a game full of just injuries and tweaks. Both players just running into each other. I believe that was Pereira that might have ran into the, the Bobcat who was going to be walking off Nico Patrick. Glad to see that he's able to walk it off. But with that situation, that's just two trains running into each other, and there's there was nothing that yeah. they could have done about it. Like it, that was inevitable at that point. All sent in, taken back out of the box. Profs take over. Quick possession and head it to midfield. Pereira's chasing after it on the near side. He's going to kick it over to the defender's head. Here comes Primich. Out of nowhere, he's going to center it, and nobody was there. Logar, from outside the box, he's going to send it in. And it's going to roll to the side of the net, picking up his angle. On the other side of the field now. It was to where it does. Guzzo's going after him. Time is stopped, though. Nico Patrick is going to run off the field. He's still injured from that previous play, I believe. And yeah, it was a, it was substitution a few seconds. Coming in. It was a few seconds of stoppage time, and Nico was on a knee, and I think the coach saw that and had to get him out the game. He did dap the, uh, the, the uh, referee up meaning he gave him a handshake. He gave him a handshake, and the referee showed his son of respect to Nico. Goal kick coming for Engel of the Bobcats. In game for NYU, number 10, Robert Shello. Shello comes back into the game. Ball to midfield. So with a tiny bit of contact on it to Primich. They're going to pass back from Carpio. Matthew, he's got it on the far side. He's getting double teamed. Really fighting for it over there. Carpio stops and Fahey. Oh, Fahey with a push. Time stopped here. I'm afraid Fahey's going to get a red card here. Everybody gets separated. And, and Tempers flaring was almost inevitable in this game. Uh, there's been a lot of contact, uh, whether it be on purpose or by accident. Um, and eventually, when, when you're contacting the other, the opposition, you know, tempers are going to flare. And we can't hear what's being said on the field. So a lot of trash talk has probably been said as well throughout this game. And eventually, think tempers are going to boil over. Both referees are talking it over there, right near where the left far corner. Referee's got a yellow card out. I 
I gotta say, Joe, I do appreciate those binoculars you have there, man. Now I can actually you can see what's going on. Referee put away his cards. So nobody's out. So I think the referee is just talking to him and say, look, you get anything else. <laughs> you know, this is your last warning. Huertas and Faye already both have the yellow cards. And <laughs> the referees don't really want to. I'm pretty sure they don't want to kick him out of the game. Exactly. The kick in. And it was blocked away. Profs take the possession. Kick over. Pereira racing over. A kick up. Almost coming near us here. And they throw in. Quick throw in. And Schoner had the possession. Gets out by Logar. Excuse me, by a Bobcat. But Logar, quick throw in. Schoner! A great setup. Primich went up and knocked into a Bobcat. He's on the ground. And Primich was going away as a bobcat is down. That looked really nasty. I saw his head bounce off of the off the field. I saw both of them fall, but after Primich got up, walked away. And I hear some of the some of the crowd saying that uh, the prop player stepped on his hand I'm as he was walking away. I mean, it's hard to say from this angle because you right. can't see it. But that is going to be Huertas down. See if he's going to stay in the game here. Yeah, the, the trainers might have to check him out because, like I said, I saw his head bounce off yeah. of the ground, and he his lights might have been knocked out for a second or two because he did not move for a few. But I'm glad to see that he's able to walk off this field. Both him and Primich went up for the ball. And they both came down very hard. Primich got up quickly, though. And as Primich, or excuse me, as Huertas comes off the field. Tough game being played by both teams. I mean, you never want to see anybody injured from the other team, but you have to like the way that, that both teams are playing very hard. And both teams really want this win here. Absolutely. The physicality is on a, another level this game. Primich almost had that header. And Pereira fighting through two defenders. Tried to get it out. And nobody was there. Got some space to work with on the near side. Meeks had it. Passed the boy to his A. Pass right behind him. They pass it back to Schlageter. Schoner can't control the ball. Can't get to control the ball from the pass. So Rodriguez is going to... Thought he was going to throw it in. They're handing it off to Meeks. Entering the game for the Bobcats is number 20, Jake Velvel. Replacing number 32, Isaiah Boyd. Velvel replaces Boyd. Boyd playing an outstanding defensive game. Logar on the near side now. Pass to Primich. <laughs> I love the crowd participation in this game. And I'm sure the props are hearing this and it's going to want them to, it's going to make them want to score it that props much more. faithful as he went up. Looked like Pereira might have got caught his head on 
another head of a bo of a bobcat. Looked like a, or maybe a, a chin to the back of the head, but Pereira got right up. Premich running over, trying to get the ball. Behind him, Rodriguez on the near side. Going to make a move. Set his teammate up. He's going to pass back to Rodriguez as Rodriguez is knocked down. And time is stopped once again. Rodriguez is down. A yellow card is awarded. And a red card as well. Vinny Guzzo is gone. Red card and he's done. 32-39 left to go in the second half. Referee has seen enough. Sergio Montan, replacing number 23, Alexander Dano. Rodriguez looks like he's going to stay in the game, just getting knocked down. He just needed a second to catch his breath. It's all right, though. Glad to see he's all right. The free kick, though, stopped by the wall. Great job there by Rowan. And another foul. This time it's going against NYU. It was Carpio that went up for it. and got knocked down trying to go for the ball. Thirty-two fifteen left to go here in the second half. Both teams fighting for that first goal of the game. And imagine if a goal is scored that this crowd is going to go crazy. Both for both teams. Right. Doesn't matter who. As on the far side, Fahey going for it and rolls out of bounds. Clock continues to run here. Far side, Modu so couldn't get his head on it as Prof will be taken down. Now he won't get up. As it looked like Smith did the same thing, walk right over the Prof that went down. He's grabbing his ankle. I don't know about you, Joe, but I do not recall seeing this many in injuries and in this right, much stoppage yeah, time. Yeah, right now. That was the captain, Shawstad, who was down. Another free kick for the prof, so is going to be the one that's taking it. I haven't heard much of him in this. Entering the game for the props. Second half. 39. Bektesh Hadzovic. In for number six. Hadzovic comes in. Shostad. Coming here for Shostad. Junior from Bud Lake, New Jersey. And, and it seems like the Bobcats' defensive strategy is to essentially uh, neutralize the Profs' best players. And so far, that, that plan is working to a T because the Profs' players are, are really unable to get any momentum going. Pretty much has been stopped. Logar has it. And give it to... And Logar's going to take it. He's not going to give it to anybody. He's going to take it all the way downfield. Trying to set somebody up. He gets it blocked. But he gets it right back. Taking it and stopped. Another chance right over the oh, net. Oh, man. A couple of chances from Logar, and he can't cash in. Checking into the game from the props is number 24, Safi El City. Yes, 
El City comes in for Carpio. El City just came in. He's going right after whoever has the ball. Man, he's quick. And on the far side, Bobcats have it. Trying to keep it in bounds, they do. They have something up, and it's just too far as Dennis comes right out and picks it up. Quick throw back in. The far side, they got some space. Schoner gets the pass blocked as they are going to keep it in bounds. It was a close play. So was right there, and nobody was home for that behind-the-back pass. The Bobcat falls down. Everybody stopped and looked for a call. And now we're going the other way. Profs have it. Pereira back to Logar. Logar is looking for El City. Bobcats have a, a full open space here on the near side. Nobody's even looking over there. Finally getting it and receiving it. Meeks. Great pass to Sullivan. You better want to Russo as that one's blocked. He went for a, a shot and it was blocked by So. Another block shot from So. A header from Schoner. Going to get out of the box, but still a big opportunity here for the Bobcats. Get it in the box. Great defense as a knockdown there. Profs have possession. Pereira is going to put it up for a Sadi. Yeah, and, and to go back to your, your statement earlier, all these players are so fast. Their closing speed is ridiculous. Like, the, the, I can't barely see their legs when they're running. That's, that's how fast they're moving. And if Shane Doherty was on the field right now, it, man, he, he can Ooh. fly. That man can fly. Man, that hey, was a fast Bob, human being. Bobcats take it down. And a foul is called. You don't sound too surprised. <laughs> Owen Smith getting up from the ground. And it's substitutions for the profs. Bobcats One prof and a couple Bobcats with approaching 27 minutes left here in the second half. Number 32, Isaiah Boyd. Replacing number seven, Owen Smith. Number two, Tom Knight here Joe on the campus of Rowan University. Number 13, mm -hmm. Alvin Sullivan. And number 14, Maxi Rodriguez. Robertson backed in for Hatsovich. Free kick opportunity here for the Bobcats. It might be a corner one now. Another one setting up here. They've already sent everybody in. Header just missed. And the profs kick it out. So he out of bounds. As they kick it back out. There was oh. like almost two balls in play there. As Fahey gets a little bit of contact. On a Bobcat. Or it might be the opposite way around. They're saying that they hit Fahey. That's Goldberg getting a little bit too much contact on Fahey as he was trying to go for the ball. Blocked by the Bobcats. Schlager had it, and we're going the other way. They're actually going to call it.
back. Fahey's going to take the free kick. Fahey, the big left boot. Trying to put it in the box for the profs. They really need a good offensive possession. Really haven't had one in a while. Yeah, their offense has been pretty stagnant in the second half. Only about, what, two or three shots have been taken so far? That's correct. Here in this half and coming out, getting his angle. El City running to whoever has the ball right now. The Bobcats didn't even expect them there as he was getting trapped by a couple profs. Back out to midfield. To the far side now, almost taken away. Schlageter lays on the ground, lets the ball come to him. Was Prof's ball as Fahey hit it up. So is uh, kick it backwards now. Nobody has possession as the ball is going right up and down. Bobcats don't have it still. It's in their offensive zone. It's going to be a throw in coming here for NYU. Go, Tommy, put one in. Throwing Goldberg taken down and another foul. Once again, the, the clock actually still remaining to run. We're just under 23 minutes left to go here in the second half. Team now is Sarmiento. Yeah, it looks like he, he took a, a kick to the shin, which is uh, never a fun experience. Absolutely not. Kick sent in. And while you had the chance, they're still in the box, though. You still have possession. And taken away by the props, cleared. All the way to their offensive zone, to the defensive zone. Boyd has it. Just came back in. Props playing a lot of defense. Maybe they're saving some of their offensive approach players for that, that final 10 minutes. Bobcats have it on the far side. Kick in, blocked. Oh, so close as a header. Just missed. Man. Crisis averted. Definitely, if there was... Mateo Russo was about six foot instead of 5'11". Yeah. That would have been the first goal of the game. Absolutely, I am willing to bet 10 cents that the props heart sank on that particular moment. And there was nothing that Kyle Dennis could have done about that one. No. The ball just over the head of Russo. A game of inches. Man, if he was six foot. the other way now. If he was six foot, he'd be able to join that tall people's club. But unfortunately, he's <laughs> 5'11". Ball blocked away by the props. Here comes Primich. Kick to Nokioma. Pereira. Now on the near side. He's got a chance here. He's going to set him up. Nokioma's looking for it. A header. He runs in the angle. Oh, what is going on? Oh, what's happened there? Nokioma's on the ground. Looks like no gets Kiyoma. up and gets right in front of Angle's face. <laughs> Nokioma and Angle they collided in, in midair, and Nokioma landed on top. Time stopped now. 
looks like Angle didn't like that. He just started kind of choking Nokioma. It was really uncalled for. Still, once again, time stopped at 2012. Left to go here in the. He's pointing angle. Looks like they're going to go to the far corner where Pereira is going to do the kick. Entering the game for Rowan is number six, Will Shawstad. No, Kiyoma is really going to want this one now. Standing over almost everybody. A little bit too much pushing and shoving is once again the before the clock starts to run. He'll talk to Russo. Still, we have 2012 left on the clock here in the second half. Pereira the kick. Out. And not even a shot attempt will be off. No Kiyoma tried for the header but couldn't get it. And here come the Bobcats on the near side. That is Montan. Russo running around trying to find an open man. To help him out. The props swarm and get it. Primich had it. So almost stole the ball once again. Ball shot in and headed away. Nokioma's chasing after it. Boyd can't find it. Nokioma headed over Boyd. And they're gonna call the foul on Bull on Nokioma. So he was trying to reach over Boyd to get that header to try to spring forward. Boyd on the far side. Okiyama's right behind him. Clayman has a small trip there coming from Logar. Gets right back up. Both teams playing very aggressive tonight. We're under 20 minutes here in the second half. They had a lane, didn't capitalize. Kick and blocked by Schlager. Huge one. You heard that mm -hmm. in the broadcast. Looks like Schalstad's back in as well. They set him up in the corner. Blocked by Schalstad. Looks like it's going to be a corner. That was a great job to take away that scoring chance, though. Yeah, and to go back to your point about both teams being aggressive at night, uh, yeah, they're they're being aggressive, but and you would think them them both being aggressive would warrant a high scoring game, but <laughs> zero zero still, and we <laughs> we're at 18 minutes left in the game. Right midway through the second half, a small kick, not a big kick into the box. Now they will it's far back. Dennis will come out a little bit and grab it. Dennis is going to look around, find nobody. So he's going to punt it downfield. A high, booming kick. No Kioma. Kicking it off is. Hey, they had Pereira. He's going to go chasing after it, and he's going to let it roll out of bounds because it was kicked off a Bobcat here. I thought that ball would never land. That was, yeah, it was <laughs> a huge punt by Dennis. That was just showing, he was just showing off there. All right. Logar throw in. Blocked away. Odusso's running after it. And he's got a big kick, a big oh, blast. Geez. And Engel wow. who almost wasn't able to grab that, but he does. Right. His hands are going to be hurting after that one. It has some gusto behind it. Schlager was so close to stealing that one as they're going to move it to the Profs logo. Meeks over to Goldberg. Shawstad's going to come in. 
He's going to bounce it off of him. And Logar is going to throw it to Pereira. Gonna hit off a of Bobcat. And they take over once again. And the profs. So comes in and gets tripped up. Now he's going to fall to the deck. Glad to see that this crowd is still in this game with uh, the Rowan chant going on as we speak. I love it. And I definitely know for a fact of what would really get him fired up right now. Oh, that would be a would goal. Love. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would get the crowd rocking. Prof's trying to get full possession of it. It's in their offensive zone. And it's taken down. Once again, time is stopped. And he's just going to start giving out yellow cards now to everybody. I believe that was... Might have been Schlager who got it. I feel like now the ref, is, he's just going to start have to giving them out now. Yeah, he's going to be on his Oprah <laughs> no status. No matter who, it's... <laughs> you get a yellow card. You get a yellow card. You all get a yellow card. Now it's going to be on Primich. Yellow card on Primich. As he's going to kick back. So has it. Stops on a dime and goes the other way. Nokiyama fighting for it. Boyd falls trying to get it. And Primich tripped. And here comes Nokiyama. He's running so fast he forgot the ball. Holding on to Nokiyama, and he trips him up. That has to be a card. That has to be a card. It has to be a card. Nokiyama says, all right. Says, all right. Matt Fahey coming back in. No Kioma is coming off as he, I don't think he wanted to come no, off. Not at all. He wanted this. He wanted a goal here. He wanted to be the one that that breaks the 0-0 draw. Nevertheless, though, you still get a great player in Fahey, great defensive player in Fahey. Big throw in. And headed away. Headed back in. Still has a chance. Primich, no. Fahey run into the corner. He's got nobody to help him. Ball is going to be out of bounds. A throw in. Quick one from out of nowhere. And into the hands of Engel. Head it right in as it popped up. Come, what, must, what goes up must come down. And it did right into Engel's hands. An easy one. 13 minutes left here in this second half. On the far side, no. Bobcats did have it out of bounds. Fahey after a throw in. Fahey's in the offensive zone, usually known for his defense. And the Bobcats slowing things up. Meeks had it. Passing it a little bit too much on that for Russo. Chasing it down. Ball's going to go out of bounds. It's going to be Prof's goal kick for Dennis. And we are approaching crunch time. Uh, 12 minutes, give or take, left in this game. And... We're still at 0-0, and neither team wants to leave this field without scoring a goal. So expect the pace to quicken as the time starts to elapse even more. Prayer almost got a, a head on that. Shawstad did. Didn't know where it was. Fahey's running after it, but it goes to Engel. 
He's going to kick it right to Boyd on the far side. Going to go back to So. Up a high, but only one from Robertson. Pereira tried to lead Fahey. A little bit too much there. I mean, they need help. They, just, they don't need that one person breaking. They need to set up and set up quick. Absolutely. Here to Meeks. To midfield. Bartow's going to split it. Split two defenders. He's going to run in. Just going to let him in. So, got a tip of the ball as he tried to get it out to Fahey. As that is Schoner, who's on the ground. As a yellow card awarded. Good job, Robert. Yellow card given out. And right now for all these players, both the Bobcats and the Profs, the adrenaline is kicking right now. But you know after this game is over, they are going to feel every bump and bruise that they have yeah. taken throughout this game. Free kick here for the Profs. Yellow card on Robert Shello. Huge kick in, and whistle blown. I think a foul on Rowan. Interesting. I didn't even see anything. Might have been a little bit too much contact there in the box. Way too many guys in there. It's bumping and bruising around. Into this game, they play Randolph Macon at 4.30 on the 5th of September. It's going to be this Wednesday, but they're going to be in Ashland, Virginia. So after this, they'll have a few games to rest up a little bit. Right, right, absolutely. Definitely well-deserved rest. Mateo Russo heads off. Just under, under 10 minutes left here in the second half. Profs already 1-0. NYU started the season yesterday with a 3-2 loss to Rutgers Camden. Foul on the Bobcats. And going the other way. Free kick here. Dennis is not going to take this. It's going to be Shostad. <laughs> There's a lot of confusion going on right now. <laughs> very, very confused where he wants the ball to be spotted. There it is. Now play resumes. I don't know what we just witnessed, Joe. That Not was very, very strange. Is worried about a couple feet. Nobody is around it. As Engel was going to come out, Boyd is on the ground. And the Bobcats have a chance. It was broken up there. Full possession now made from the Bobcats. Blocked by Schlager. Fahey has it. And pushed. Schlager was pushed just a slightly there. Right at the Profs logo. Now free kick awarded. Gonna have Shostad probably again boot one in there. You're gonna tell So to get in the box. You're gonna send it away. Send it in. And another foul right before the ball even lands. Has a chance to land. Bringing it up was Monton. Blocked there, and the Profs trying to get possession on the far side. Olgar was helping out. 
Big chance to the other end of the field. They're gonna save it. Is hit off the face. I believe of Logar. Logar has been helping out defense a ton. Corner kick coming for NYU. Near side kick. Up. Save. Kyle Dennis comes out of the net a little bit. Catches it. He's going to keep it with him. Does the play even out as he throws it over to So. Shostad slowly bringing it up. Look around. He's going to find Logar helping out. He's got a chance for Pereira. Pereira runs into a defender and they kick it out. Believe it's going to be a corner. Checking back in for the props. Number 19, Jackson Nokioma. Nokioma comes in. Replacing number 12, Mike Schoner. We have a chance here. Big body with Nokioma and so. Pereira. Won't be Pereira. I believe it'll be a throw in by Fahey. Huge throw. Push and angle. Collects that one. The two on one here, trying to get the ball. A huge kick by Engel. Kyle Dennis says, leave it, I got it. Five and a half minutes left to go here in the second half. You don't get a goal. Here we go right to overtime. So we got five and a half for a chance at it. Schlagging her up. No Kioma. A slight touch. Man. And they're going to call a foul on him. I, I don't know, Joe. I think the refs just like the sound of their whistles because some of wow. these calls are a little bit ridiculous. It was a barely touched by No Kioma. And on the other side, tracks the ball down. That was so. And Kyle Dennis comes out sliding. No Kioma's already on the other side. He's calling for it back there. Not a good idea for a four-on-one there. You're going to try it anyway. Boyd with the header. Pereira was there, but it still was headed by the Bobcats. Patrickson. As they get the ball away, Dennis thought about coming out, but he's not. As so plays, bumps into him a little bit. They're going to say it's going to be out of bounds on the Bobcats. Four minutes left to go here in the second half. Oops, sorry. Dennis with the goal kick. Midfield. No Kiyoma. Right behind the back pass. Will be kept in by Primich. Pass to Logar. Logar's going to boot it in. Fahey almost had the header. Running after it. Schlagner. Bobcats have it. They're going to pass it. Right here, the props logo. Schlagner, a soft pass to. Pereira, he's going to get knocked down. Foul called in. Got Pereira, he's slow to get up. Shaw Stad's going to send it. Taking his time. Just under three minutes. Put it away. No Kioma, still going for it as Engel rushes out and gets it. Big pass out. So just takes it away from him. On the near side, they uh, do not keep it in. 
this is the point in the game where you got to really dig deep and go into those energy reserves and, and just try your hardest to score. If there's any secret play that, that the props have been working on, now is the time to utilize it. As Logar went for it, definitely caught Smith there. Play resumes again. So gets it out. Nokioma keeps continuing to look for the breakaway play. Doesn't get it there, but it's a foul. Going the other way, we're under two minutes. 142 left to go in the second half. Score still nothing, nothing. Profs looking to stay undefeated as their, their second win of the season. NYU still searching for their first. Way to end this, the Gilmore Alumni Classic. Because they got a lot of open space here. Crossing midfield. Beating Mo Duceau. Gonna kick it over the net. A sigh of relief coming from Kyle Dennis there. A great shot opportunity. Would have hit the back of the net, the top corner. One minute remaining. One, One minute, minute remaining. Left in this second half. The props need to go and need to go now. Whistle blows, just making sure that the ball's on the line. Kick is away. Ball's gonna roll out of bounds. Throw in and so takes it away. Nokioma's still calling for it. Walked away by Shello. They're going to get it in. Ten, nine, Ten seconds. Eight, seven, so they were going eight, for it. Oh they called man. a foul quickly. They're trying to get to this. And they wanted to get one last shot, and they won't be able to as... Elijah, my friend, we are heading to OT. OT overtime. It, and you know what? Oh, and there's a little bit of pushing and shoving here. Referee in the middle of everything. Just telling him to go to the sideline. They're arguing with the referee saying, you need to give us a shot to try to finish the game right then and there. As somebody said, somebody... To Modu so they gotta physically restrain him. And that's the end of regulation. Yes, that will be the end of regulation. NYU zero. Rowan zero. Yeah, you see tempers flaring, but honestly, overtime is kind of the expected result of this game because these two teams are evenly matched tonight, and the defenses have really showed up, and unfortunately, for, for both teams, really, that... After a shocking ending to its season a year ago, the men's... At Rowan University, we are committed to a healthy, safe, and supportive community. It's on us to create an environment where everyone feels and is safe. To create an environment in which sexual assault is unacceptable. Sexual violence is more than just a crime against individuals. It threatens our families. It threatens our communities. It's on us to do something about it. To hold our friends accountable for their actions. To stop being a bystander to the problem of sexual assault. When we see something wrong, we should not look the other way. One in four women, one in 16 men, will experience some form of sexual assault during their college career. It's on us to look out for one another. To recognize that sex isn't sex unless you have consent. To get a friend home safe. Less than 5% of rapes are reported to law enforcement. It's on us to support survivors of sexual violence. And to never blame them. To start the conversations that are difficult. To take reports of sexual assault seriously 
It's on us to promote a culture of respect. To treat women with respect. To treat men with respect. It's on us, all of us, to stop sexual assault. fall in love with sports, our universities are working every day to keep college sports safe. So you can watch them play with a little less worry and a little more joy. It's not about where you were born. It's not about your gender. Or the color of your skin. Or whether you're rich or, or in the middle. No matter what you play, if you have the skill and drive to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. Hello, I'm Dan Gilmore, Director of Athletics at Rowan University. The primary goal of our department is to develop you, the student athlete, in all aspects of life. Rowan Athletics is committed to your success on the field, in the classroom, and as citizens of high moral character and service. Our mission defines the commitment. We exist to purposely foster a selfless environment that cultivates community, embraces learning, and enhances excellence in sport and life. I am a prop. We are dedicated to the pursuit of excellence. And committed to helping others achieve their fullest potential. As scholars, athletes, leaders, and members of society. Our department and the members within are devoted to enhancing opportunities for success and competitive greatness. I am a prop. We are committed to developing a spirit of unity and belonging in the athletic department for those we serve. We encourage diversity and inclusion. And create identity by bringing together members of our campus, alumni, and local communities through athletics and service. I am a prof. We hold ourselves to the highest standards of integrity. Through actions of respect, honesty, and fair play. We strive to behave ethically towards others. And convey expectations of high moral character. We are committed to each other and respect the differences in others. Our individual successes strengthen the whole. And we support one another in our endeavors as we each share a common goal. I am a prof. Education is the forefront of our existence. We develop a culture where lifelong learning is a priority. We support each other and our student athletes in the quest for self-improvement and academic success. To uphold the mission, Rowan Athletics Department will use its core values as guidance in actions both on and off the field. Stop right here with Elijah Brown as we head to overtime here on the campus of Rowan University. The final game for the Gilmore Alumni Classic. The score 0-2-0. Zero zero. The way that these two teams have been playing, very aggressive. You would think that there would be five or six goals for right. each team on the scoreboard right now, and there's zero. I, I, could, I guess each team's aggressiveness kind of counteract each other yeah anyway. and the first one that scores here wins don't score in the first 10 minutes of the game have a little bit of a break and play another 10 nobody scores there just a tie profs are hoping for an early goal here. It's tough to do that when you don't have the ball. Is great ball control by NYU here to start OT. Okiyoma out there to start the overtime as Schlagener gets it up to him. Finally has some space to work. He's going to try to blast one, and it got 
blocked. Endel came out and kicked it to the far side. Have a chance right outside the box. Slide, tackle a successful one. Couple props go down. It's actually going to be a foul on. Leave a couple pushes there coming from NYU. It's going to be props ball. Free kick coming from Kyle Dennis. Perching eight minutes to go. Not a boot downfield, a small kick. A lot of yellow cards given in the game as that one's given away. A chance for NYU here in overtime. Shots up, blocked by Dennis, it's right in front. Header, another block. And a ball, and it's in. Oh, man. After a couple blocks by Dennis. He tried his hardest this day. That is heartbreaking. After a few blocks by Dennis, they finally put it in, and NYU stuns the Rowan crowd here at home for their, their first win of the season. Man, Dennis had everything he could do. At that point, it was three on one. You know, he, he was able to save it two or three times, but Eventually, that he was outnumbered. There was only so much he could do about it. A big overtime goal. The one nothing win from N.